Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. I just came back from Just Madrid Art Fair and I went there three days in a row. I saw something very interesting, unexpectedly interesting, and maybe it is an opportunity for many of your guys who wish to sell art directly to the collectors without going through an art gallery and without you know, having a physical location to show your art, but to be able to participate at art fairs as a very young emerging artist or slash artist managed gallery. So I think it's something worth sharing. That's why in the next 20 minutes, I would like to you know, talk to you guys about it. And I just came from the fair without washing my face, without changing my clothes. You can see that my shiny forehead. So don't worry, I'll put a lot of B-roll videos so you can see the fair through my lens without seeing my big forehead. Sorry about that. Before getting into today's video, I'd like to quickly talk to you guys about the Madrid Art Fair week. Usually it takes place between uh, February, March, and it's Wednesday to Sunday. And during this few days, a lot of art fairs are taking place at the same time, like Arco Art Madrid, Just Madrid, Urbanity Drawing Room, and Hybrid Art Fair. Arco is definitely the big brother here, but I would say it's like the father here because it just celebrated its 40th birthday and I was there and I made a video and in the video I compared Arco to Venice by now. I know it's not a band now. I was at the Venice band now and I knew it's obviously a very different thing, but many artists would consider being represented at Arco would be the end, the top of their career. And after that, there's nothing more because it's so important, so established, so unshakable. And that's why I say Arco is like, you know, Venice band now slash the godfather here of art fairs in Spain. And after that, you have Art Madrid. Uh, it just celebrated its 16th edition at the uh, Galleria de Cristal, a beautiful location. It reminds me of the Grand Palais. You can see that from the videos that I made before, it's a more affordable art fair. It's not as established as Arco, it's not as emerging as Urbanity, so it's somewhere in the middle. I would say it's the big sister here in the family of the art fairs. Just Madrid is four years younger than Art Madrid and it's just celebrated its 12th edition now. Now it's in an awkward location, um, an awkward uh, position in the market as well. So that's why I want to make this video to explain you a little bit in depth about the difficulties it was facing, it had been facing for the past five years. And it switched location with Urbanity and that's the main problem. So Urbanity opened at the Nocturnal Palace and it was in this three floor beautiful old house with uh, very beautiful marble stones, very old, but also kind of dark and kind of limited because you cannot really make a renovation of this place and make it bigger, right? You cannot build up, you cannot dig down because the way it is, it's a protected building. I would say Just Madrid had the short end of the stick and Urbanity had this bigger space and more expandable because you can uh, rent more floors, you can talk to the school and get bigger space and the space is physically expandable, whereas the Nocturnal was not expandable. So Jazz Madrid was at this very, uh, let's say, small space and it's kind of stuck. Urbanity is more uh, urban art, like the name suggests, and is more emerging, and they call themselves the new contemporary art, which is uh, rather a marketing concept from France a few years ago, but it's really, really uh, trending nowadays. So people adapt this term also here in Spain, the new contemporary art. So basically the emerging, a little bit uh, pop, a little bit urban, you know, a mix of everything. And it's a very nice fair. And I went there and I took photos, I, you know, every year and it's pretty cool I liked it and then there's the drawing room and hybrid I would say drawing room it's uh, for works on paper it's not in the competition it's not a typical fair it's very niche and hybrid is the hotel art fair in the hotel so it's obviously very different again so I would say the four in the family is in a let's say a closer group a closer competition and Arco being the father and Art Madrid being the big sister just Madrid is the middle child is in an awkward situation our vanity is the spoiled uh, little brother. It has a lot more investment. It has a better location. It has like all the perks. And just after six ish years, it went uh, like rocketing. Now it is, uh, I would say, the fastest growing art fair among the family of art fairs here in Spain. 
And now, after you know the overview, so you see the difficulty of just Madrid. And this year, when I went there, uh, I felt also like last year and the year before, it was very, very crowded. I'm glad that there were a lot of people, but at the same time, it's even made it really look <laughs> more crowded than ever before. And the smallest booth is like the size of my bathroom, and the medium size or the bigger ones are like the size of my guest bedroom that is that that small but this is the physical limitation you cannot blame the fair organization because you know they have 35 galleries this year and if they want to serve all 35 galleries they have to squeeze them in and build Plado, uh, the fake dry walls to actually block some uh, hallways and is making it more kind of dark but yeah this is the reality they have the limited space to work with and when I went, I talked to five random gallerists and out of the five, four uh, galleries told me that they were the first time at Jazz Madrid Art Fair. And I asked the four um, if they were happy with the fair, but it was very early to say that they were generally happy. And out of the four gallerists, two of which were self-representing artists. So they are the artists and they are the galleries at the same time. So I will focus on them because I think that's more relevant to your guys, my audience. The first person I talked with is a lovely lady from Valencia. Her name is Liliana and it's uh, the smaller booth. Usually the smaller booths cost 2000 euro and uh, from different regions, you might have different tax on top. So you might pay different. So I would say the 2000 is just kind of a rounded up price and it's tiny, tiny, tiny. And when I did like this, I could almost touch the two walls. You can imagine how small it is. Um, although it's very small, but for Liliana, it's enough because she has only her works to represent. So when I was talking to her, I was attracted by her big smile, the friendliness, and also the works. And it took me a good 10 minutes to realize that she was the gallerist, that she was also the artist. And I asked her, so where's your art space? And she said, no, I don't have a space. I was like, what do you mean you don't have a space? I was like, if you don't have a space, you're allowed to show at the art fair like this. And she's like, yeah, yeah. I could. And then I realized that out of the five galleries, four were new. That means if new people need to come, old people need to go. That means they left and it made space for the new ones. And I was like, wait a second, you know, people left. And that was like also the case of Arco. Arco this year had only a little more than half of the galleries than last year because of the pandemic. It gave opportunity to a more local, regional galleries and artists. So artists could show uh, at an art fair like Jasmine. And it's kind of interesting. So she had just her online space, social media, and her own studio. So when she organized event, it will be taking place at her own studio. Do. And that's very interesting. It's an excellent example of artists who did not have gallery representation or who uh, did not have a big space to show the work, like your own open studio. You know, you can go to art fairs, you can represent yourself, be client facing, you can talk to people with a big smile. And I mean, we, with the mask, I could see her smile and she's very friendly, very outgoing. And I would say she's a perfect example of an artist who is keen, who is a fighter, who is, um, you know, like a, with a can-do attitude. And she wasn't lower level than any other art gallery. And that's why it took me a long time to realize that she was a self-representing artist because I literally thought she was the gallerist who represented the one artist. Because for small booths, the limit is you can represent maximum two artists at a time because, hey, it's that small. You cannot put more artists inside. It's logic. That's why I had this impression of she was the, actually the gallerist. So that was very, very nice. I loved this encounter and it inspired me to kind of think about a strategy for artists to represent themselves as gallerists at art fairs. So I maybe make another video uh, talking more in depth about it, how to, the things you need to know, and maybe so click uh, subscription if you do not want to miss the upcoming videos. The second uh, artist slash gallerist self-representing I talked to is someone I've met before. It's called Gallery Panopticum. It's an a Austrian artist uh, self-managing group or association. I don't really know how to define them because uh, they're a bit of 
everything, right? So if they are the gallery, they are the artists, they are the group, they are the kind of also a studio location. Very cool project. And I met them before in Art Madrid in 2020, before the pandemic. I talked to the gallerist slash artist a long time because he drove all the way from Austria with a van to Art Madrid and he had to buy this big booth because there was no small booths and he spent almost 10,000 euro and he couldn't recuperate all the investment and he was uh, very, um, let's say, disappointed. Art Madrid wasn't really suitable for him. So I said, next year, why don't you uh, come to hybrid or to a different fair so you could explore uh, other possibilities. And this year he is at Jazz Madrid and I'm happy to see him again and his lovely wife. And during the 20 minutes I was talking to him, uh, someone came to buy the work, to reserve with the contact, writing the numbers. And I was like, wait a second, do you sell every 20 minutes? Because only 20 minutes I was here, you sold the work, right? It's, does it sell this much? And he was like, uh, no, it's not every 20 minutes, but we did sell two works already, including this one. So I think it's a very positive experience for him to come to a smaller fair. So the booth was a medium sized. He was able to show three artists and that was around 3,500. So that's like really, really cheaper than Art Madrid. And he was able to recuperate with just one sale, the, um, the booth costs and the gas money. He drove the van and he drove with his wife. So maybe uh, it's a good idea to come to a smaller fairs and spending less. So you have less risk, uh, less kind of uh, pressure so that you know that with one work, you just need to sell one to recuperate the whole cost. So that was something very interesting. I'm very happy to see him, to see him sold the work and to see that uh, this year the art fair was working for him, unlike last year. I think it's not really the fault of Art Madrid, but the nature of the fair and the compatibility between the uh, artist, the gallerist and the collectors at the fair. So it's a bit of uh, meeting different criteria, the parameters to make a good business out of it. So that's why I like to, you know, uh, tell you 20 minutes of this, what I've seen in this art fair so that you know how it feels like and you know, how this fair is in this art market. And maybe it helps you uh, choose the right art fair as a artist. So you know that not to go to the most expensive, spending a lot of money and losing the money, rather going to a fair at your level, at your size so you can invest the money comfortably. So besides these encounters, I've also uh, talked with uh, one gallerist who I've seen in Urbanity this year and last year, and now he's also at Just Madrid because they were not happening at the same time. So it's not clashing, so he was able to, and I asked him if he was happy, and he said, yeah, I'm happy. And I asked him, would you come back to Just Mad next year? And he's like, no, I'm not coming back. I was like, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second. You said you're happy and you're not coming back. The logic doesn't work. And he was like, oh, because I feel that this is a very small fair. It's very new for young galleries, young artists. So he felt like he would grow out of it next year. And I must say that this is my main problem with Just Mad, is that it positioned itself as a stepping stone, as something kind of a disposable. I say that not from my imaginary impression, but also from a fact. Uh, in 2016, uh, 17, I remembered I looked at the website of Just Mad and I saw there was a huge slogan as a testimonial from a gallerist who attended Just Madrid and it said, Last year I was at Jazz Madrid, this year I'm at Arco. And he's trying to say that Jazz Madrid served its purpose and helped uh, Gallerate just, uh, you know, uh, go bigger and go to the next fair, next level. Maybe for some galleries who need to go to the institutional side and just tick the box and go. Okay, it's a stepping stone temporary, but as a small gallery, as a medium sized gallery, as an artist gallery, it's not a good idea to come to a fair just for once because you need practice and every year you get better. Right? You know what's the deal, you know the people, you know the location, you know the, you know the collectors, what kind of interactions you have. You need that practice, right? So just as you get a good hang of it, you are growing out of it and that's not really nice, right? So I don't really know how to feel about this. Uh, maybe you can have your own input. Leave me a comment in the comment box below. But it's just my own personal impression. I think uh, you don't really say you are the stepping stone on your own communication. There's kind of something um, does not 
fit very well. And I would say, as a woman, I would not tell a man, this year you date me, next year you date Miss Universe, right? So, no, what does it make me, right? You want to say, let's have a lifelong bonding relationship, let's help each other be a better person, and that, you know, this kind of relationship. I think as an artist, you don't want to have to hunt the next fair every year, you want to have something stable something of, you know, toda la vida, all life uh, comfortable to form a relationship and we have already many uncertainties in life. We just want something that we can hold on to in a way, right? Like until maybe after 20 years, right? in 10 years, you grow out of it, but not the next year. So that was something that I felt, you know, kind of, mm, you know, not so certain about Just Madrid Art Fair. And that was the impression I had the past few years since I've seen this slogan, so I had some sort of negative kind of impression. And this year I saw the artist was given the opportunity to show and I had uh, obviously a better impression because I'm always on the side of the artist and I like to see that they were given the fair chance to try. I don't know exactly what was the reason why many galleries left and giving the slots and making the space for artists to come in but I believe that could be a global tendency and in the future as galleries couldn't travel internationally due to some restrictions or they have some difficulties with their fairness so that small artists within the same country same region have the opportunity to pay for it and get this opportunity to really you know have this chance to showcase their own works and talk to the collectors face to face. Um, what else more about the fair? Yeah, there was one thing. So there were a lot of pillars and next to every pillar almost there was like a mysterious little box and I almost tripped over it. Behind it was a power outlet. It was a, a hole and I was thinking this year's uh, sponsor is La Prohibida, the Forbidden Cider. It's a drink brand and it's uh, not bad. I like cider so I like the drink. So I would imagine someone trip over it with a drink, pour the drink under and you get electric. It. it could have a potential safety hazard and I do not like this idea so why don't they just put something flat but then uh, instead of putting it flat they put a fire extinguisher on top so that it's even worse the people trip over with the fire extinguisher on top so I don't really know what is the logic but it's you know some minor flaws in the logistics and organization and it's not really the fault of just Madrid because it's rather the fault of the location, the, you know, the local manager at Palacio Nocturno. It's just my small complaint about it, but you know, it's, it's nothing big. Um, there are also some very positive little details. Like I was going around and I saw a guy with a shoebox, like a precious shoebox he was holding. I was like, what is that? And I asked and the guy opened the box and they didn't have the right packaging. So they put it in you know, some sort of shoebox. So I like it, it's kind of funny, you know, and that's why I think uh, you know, affairs like this is more suitable for small galleries, uh, artist galleries, because, you know, in a big fair like Arco, you're never going to frame the work uh, in a shoebox like that. But, you know, it's not something negative. I feel this kind of adaptation, you know, it's kind of cute. And I also saw a guy with a, a funny necklace. I stopped him. I said, you know, what's your necklace? And he told me the story uh, that his friend is a jewelry maker and she would like to uh, have people in the art fair wearing the necklaces to kind of expose, to show the works. And I found it super funny. And I think the jewelry maker definitely hacked the art fair. So this is another inspiration I had. It's like, you don't even need to uh, pay to get into the fair, right? So you basically go to the fair and you wear your works on you and you get attention, you talk to people and voila, you have contacts, you may be potentially, you can make sales. So that's basically um, the stuff I've seen at Just Madrid and I will close it with the performance I've seen and you can uh, check it out if you like it. Don't forget to click like. If you don't like it, don't forget to click dislike twice. Right. So <laughs> thank you for watching and see you in the next video.